Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Eccentric, the makers of the K-Box and the new K-Pulley. Guys, flywheel training's really grown in popularity of late, and although it's something that's been around for a while, the simple reason that it's grown in popularity is because it works. We've been lucky to have a K-Box in our weight room for the past three years, and we've seen some really great things when it comes to improving the athlete's ability to change direction, and then looking at our return to play protocols with different lower body injuries with the student athletes. The love-hate relationship that everyone has with the K-Box is now just going to grow more with the addition of the K-Pulley. The ability to do standing presses, pulls, rip-throughs, and knee drive exercises is just going to be another arsenal to our training and another addition to the love-hate relationship that our student-athletes have with the awesome tools that come from Eccentric. Go ahead and hop over to Eccentric.com today to check out what they have. Guys, I can't recommend it enough and I guarantee you won't be disappointed not just with the products, but with the awesome customer service that Eccentric provides. Hey, everybody. If you enjoy the podcast and the content that it provides, make sure you hop over and check out the all-new Strength Coach Network. The Strength Coach Network is the combination of the CVA SPS community and the Rugby Strength Coach community, bringing you what is sure to be the Internet's leading resource for continuing education for strength and conditioning professionals. Combining these two resources has allowed us to bring some of the best content from some of the best minds in the world together for your one-stop shop to better improve the continuing education for not just yourself, but your entire staff. Bringing together all of the lectures from the Rugby Strength Coach community, along with the lectures exclusively done for the Central Virginia Sport Performance community, and all the lectures performed at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar, make this an absolute must for performance coaches around the world. The world-class lectures at the Strength Coach Network are not all that you'll see as well. The discussion in the forums and the support and the career guidance from some of the top practitioners in the world, from people all over the world, makes this an absolute must and a great place for you to network, learn, and grow as a performance professional. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS, that's C-V-A-S-P-S, to get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. We're sure you're going to find great value in the Strength Coach Network and are really excited to have you involved. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com and use the code CVASPS to check it out today. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, we have an absolutely killer talk with Cincinnati basketball's Mike Rayfelt, and we are going to get right into it, guys. Mike's going to talk about how he continues to attempt to progress his program and kind of give us the last 12 months of what he's been doing, looking at sleep monitoring and the pros and cons to how he saw things working with that and getting right into things like VBT, body scanning, uh, force plate work, and how he's moving forward towards more of a a monitoring in the weight room, hands-on approach with these things to make sure that all these things continue to improve his student-athletes. Uh, We then get into how these rule changes and the foreign trips impact what he does with his team. And that's really cool for me because it's obviously something that so many of us have been impacted by as they continue to add more and more sport time in the summer. And then the curveball that we all get every four years when it comes to the, the preparation prior to these foreign trips. Mike really dives deep into how he's handled that and how he's progressed things uh, moving forward. You know, and then Mike finishes off by sharing with us uh, the direction that he sees himself moving and how he wants to make a better impact for the student athletes that he gets the pleasure of working with up there in Cincinnati. Guys, this is really an awesome talk. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Hey, Jay, what's up, man? My pleasure. Yeah, man, I'm stoked for this one. So let's, let's get right to it, man. What, what's got you fired up up there at UC right now, brother? Uh, you know, you know, every year trying to do something different, um, trying to bring something new to the program. Um, you know, just for my sake too, just being trying to be creative and keep it fresh, keep it new for myself, uh, professionally and obviously for our players. You know, it's my seventh season here now with uh, University of Cincinnati with the basketball team. You know, first couple of years you're just trying to get your head above water, figuring out the program, figuring out coach. Um, Last year, I started, I got really, um, went down the rabbit hole with the sleep, sleep science stuff, sleep technology, trying to 
find different ways to, from a sleep hygiene standpoint to improve our guys' sleep, to help performance, to help recovery. Um, from there, everything from, you know, blue, blue light blocking glasses, blue light therapy in the morning, um, to simulate the sunrise, um, you know, warm bath before bed to, to change the core temperature. All that, all that stuff really went down uh, the rabbit hole, and I track, I tracked all this stuff. I use, I use a sleep tracker. Um, one, one of the things I, I'm, uh, we stay at a hotel for home games, so and I'm, I'm the guy staying there. You know, I'm the guy that's doing the, doing the bed check and the wake up and stuff. But to make my, to make the job fun for me, I was like, make my time worth it. So I started tracking sleep, and really anything I did night before I didn't see I didn't see any improvement in the in the sleep performance so I kind of got away from that this year because it's, it's and then this is my opinion on it kind of like diet you know one good meal it's not going to not going to change someone's body composition one decent night of sleep hygiene and then your other five nights are horrible it, it, it's, it's not going to improve it unless the kid buys in and does it every night so I, I kind of, I still try to do some of that stuff. I got away from it because it's it wasn't worth the, the investment of time I was putting into it. You know what I'm saying? No, a hundred percent. Do you think that the guys look at that or or miss that when they now see things that have changed a little bit? Like miss what I'm what I'm doing with it? Yeah. Uh, not really. I still I still provide um, the tools. So we'll still have the glasses and um, stuff for a bath and, you know, protein shake for bed. I'll still provide that stuff. I just I just uh, stopped tracking it and stopped sharing that information with the players as much as I did just because I didn't I didn't see. I have other things that I wanted to accomplish this year, and that wasn't uh, – I didn't see the results I wanted from it. Does that make sense? No, 100%. So then where did that lead you to what you're looking at this year? So now I'm looking at more things. So <laughs> let's step back a little bit. Um, my thing is all, you know, if the guys buy into it, they like it, and it has results, and they will actually do it, that, that's where I'm going to invest my time. I'm not going to be pulling teeth to make kids wear blue light blocking glasses if they don't want to, if I'm seeing no benefit or marginal benefit from it. So... This year, I'm looking at more technology-based things to, um, I want to use, I guess the weird word, I kind of hack, hack some of that stuff um, from a technology standpoint. Um, back, you know, back in the day, you know, you make a protein shake. Hey, buddy, go grab a protein shake. If you turn your back, the guy might not grab it. If I grab the protein shake, put it in the kid's hand, watch him drink a protein shake, it's going to have, you know, value. It's the same thing with some of the stuff. I put it on his desk. Hey, make sure you put this on at night. Hey, make sure you eat three meals a day. Do I know it? Do I know it's ha- what's happening? He could be doing it. He could be not. So I'm more invested more time in things. That I, I know that's going to have some of, some of the change. I can monitor it and, and watch it and make sure it gets done. Um, so this year, technology wise, <clears throat> um, from the sleep standpoint, we're still using the blue. We use these blue light block, uh, blue light glasses in the morning, especially with in Cincinnati here. We're always indoors. Um, the guys, you know, sleep rhythms all thrown off. So we try to. Um, the science is the 20, 20 minutes of blue light exposure will uh, suppress melatonin production. So if a guy's a night owl and you have a noon game, and you know. 10 o'clock, guys getting shots up, 11 o'clock, 60 minute clock on, and guys still producing mel- melatonin. Um, he's probably going to have a performance issue, if not a co- cognitive issue. Um, so if you use those glasses, supposedly it um, suppresses up for up to four hours, and we've had some really good results from that. If, if not, I mean, we're not, we're not taking, like, blood draws and stuff like that, but uh, – the kid, the kids like it. The kids say it helps them. I personally use them, and I have, I have issues with seasonal, um, not seasonal depression, but seasonal disorder. Get a little funky in the winter. You don't know, see the sunrise. I use them. They help me out a lot. They help me sleep better at night. 
if you and also <clears throat> the blue light will increase your serotonin levels supposedly and the, obviously it's gonna make you feel better but the more serotonin you can produce in the produce in the morning the more it's a precursor to melatonin supposedly and uh will help you sleep better so um helps helps me a lot in the winter time i love it man and i love that you're sitting there rolling with the guys with it figuring out what's the best way to figure it out for mike and how it can fit in with the with the men of cincinnati basketball sure so then where where else are you running down right now mike what else you got going on up there this is sensational we got a lot. um so kind of going through not a weight room renovation but uh we just we just had our uh, basketball arena locker rooms uh meal room everything uh redone uh no new weight room though so I try to get our weight room up to the standards of everything else in the facility, but it's a slow process. So just bringing in more sports, sports technology, more assessment tools. Um, just got the Sparta force play in uh, about a month ago. So I don't have much information to share on that, but I like it a lot. Personally, I've only scanned the guys about three times so far. So we only had about a month ago, um, but I like it. I know there's some controversy. Uh, a lot of strength coaches want more data. I don't, I'm not a sports scientist. I'm not going to pretend to be. I don't need all that data. So it's a raw scan to give me some basic stuff that takes, you know, 60 oh. seconds to 90 seconds per athlete. It's perfect for me. So I like it a lot. Um, we just got something else called a 360 uh, Fit. It's a, it's a body scanner. I don't know if anyone else is using such technology, but... Um, I'm not going to use it so much for body composition, even though it does that, because it, obviously with the camera, it spins the athlete, it takes about 46 seconds, and it's going to measure a volume, takes their weight, and it's going to get your density and get a body comp. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but the pictures are pretty cool. It's a, not a photorealistic picture, but it's a, it's a gray silhouette of the athlete. And it will take body measurements. It's actually originally designed for the clothing industry, but they're trying to get in the fit and arm measurement, um, right and left limbs for legs and arms, waist measurement. And you can get some pretty cool before and after stuff with it. One of the things that you guys are definitely known for is being one of the, the strongest and toughest teams in the country. So, what I think would be a cool little discussion to run down with, because we just talked about the sciencey technical aspect. But what then is the onboarding system like that you guys are using up there at UC? Because some people would say that those two visions may be kind of clashing. Sure. Um, I mean, we, we lift, we strain train. Pretty basic, pretty simple. We push, we press, and we hinge, we squat, we carry. Um, you know, we're going to do that every week. Um, and then we have a bunch of, uh, I want to say called window dressing, but a lot of, you know, if the meat and potatoes, your workouts that we have a lot of, you know, appetizers, and side dishes to make it more sports specific for the athletes to make it more buy-in. Um, obviously coaches like that, but end of the day, we're going to do progressive, simple, um, resistance training to increase their muscle mass. Um, my belief as a basketball strength coach, it's the most important thing. We get these kids that are most likely to be ectomorphs, tall, lean, um, undersized, and have a great trans uh, of injury just because they're underdeveloped, right? They never lifted plus their body type. So in the summer, I'm going to put as much hay in the barn as I can because I know the sport of basketball is such a catabolic sport. No matter what I do in the weight room during the season, they're going to lose some muscle mass. They're running, you know, six, seven miles every day at practice. Well, all we can do, you know, try to try to impede that as much as we can. Um, so just basic lifting, man, you know. Um, but we make it we make it not look that way with what we do around that, how we package things, I think. I love it, man. And you do put a lot of the, the stuff that you're doing on Instagram, and, and you've put out, some sensational players. So let's talk about the simplicity of it and what, how Mike evaluates these kids when they get there, and then how does that impact 
the direction you move with these young men? Sure. So every every year my program's different. It's changed. It's evolved. Just like I'm trying to evolve as a coach. I'm always trying to learn. Um, not to brag on myself, but just 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 me. I have a a creative spirit. Um, so I'm always going to try to find, you know, what, what's these NBA teams doing? What are these other college teams doing? We're not, what are our NFL teams are doing? Um, either it's a couple years old technology or it's no one's doing it yet. Um, but I'm also blessed. We, we, our kids, we have, you know, I have my kids four or five years, most of them, um, depend, you know, like some kids register here. We don't have the one and done kids. So I have a lot, a lot of time to develop these guys, especially, you know, five, six years ago, you know, the rules were a little different with the summer. My kids here all summer. Um, so it's a blessing that I get my hands on that long. It helps me out. It makes me look good. Yeah, and that's something that I think that a lot of people overlook is the difference between programs that are able to develop kids and take their time versus programs that are only going to have kids for four to eight months. Right. Right. No, it, it's, it's all about the consistency. Obviously I, my guys will leave for, even for winter. We left for winter break. I had guys drop eight pounds in, in four or five days just cause they left over winter break. And like, what's going on just cause they're the lack of consistency or when they, they leave for a uh, spring break, they'll leave for a couple of weeks, they come back and it's like, what, what happened to these guys? So if I can keep them here as long as I can, it's, it just it helps add the clay to that ball. I love it. I love it. So then let's, let's take a step back. So seven years ago, it's hard to believe you've been there seven years already. Know, when, right? when, when you stepped on campus, if you could jump in a DeLorean right now and go 88 miles an hour and be like, hold on, buddy, here's a couple things. What are some things that 2019 Mike would tell 2012 Mike? Hmm. Um, I did a lot. I probably, I probably do less now from an exercise standpoint um then then i came in you know hair on fire our workouts were long we did long mobility sessions we did long foam rolling sessions we I mean, the workouts took an hour and a half hour and 45 minutes um and it just it was it wasn't very efficient but i was trying to you know i had all the stuff was all the stuff i wanted to do with the guys and I didn't know how to subtract um, stuff that wasn't, I mean, it's all useful. It's all great stuff, but what's my best bank for my dollar? What's my attention span with these guys? Um, and it took me, you know, a good first. I didn't really hit my stride with that stuff till year three, first two years, just trying to figure out what works and what doesn't with, with my, with my, first of all, my facility, um, the style of our coaching staff, our players we recruit. Um, by year three, I started figuring out what I could subtract, what I needed to add to, to help the guys. Does that make sense? Uh, it's a hundred percent. And I think that what's funny is the guys who seem to be in basketball longer tend to say the same thing. It's like, I came in and it was like, we got to do it all. And now it's like, we got to yeah. do about 30 to 45 minutes an hour tops of stuff and get them out. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh you know, like I, I always say, it's, and you know, it's cliche, but it's all about, you know, buy-in and guys, guys believe in what you're doing. And if you have them there doing stuff that seems like busy work to them, it's not to us. Like we're, you got to put, put yourself in 18-year-old kids, you know, shoes. Um, it seems like busy work to them. It's kind of when you do the real stuff, or the stuff that really, you know, you really want to do, it's their effort level is probably not going to be as much as if it was a shorter session and their, you know, their intensity level is not going to be there. So then what your results are going to suffer just because you wanted to do a 15 minute foam rolling session. And that that's what you want to do. And that's what your bread and butter is. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not smashing um, foam rolling. I'm just using that as an example. No. And it's, it's crazy that, you know, when you look back at those situations, how something is small and minute, that we would look at now as small and minute we thought was so important and took so much away from what we were looking at. Right. And you'll see like, you know, as you're in the industry longer, you'll, 
you'll see that stuff like it's, it's trends and stuff and copycat this and he, I think for me, you know, I was, I was younger when I started here. Now I, I think I have enough confidence in myself for what I'm doing that I can, I don't need to necessarily follow the trends. I'm going to do what I think is best for my, my athletes based on my experience um, versus what coaches, sometimes the coaches think they need to do. But I'm really blessed here. Um, I'm not micromanaged at all. I get to do whatever I want. I get to train guys when I want. Um, coach is really good in that aspect, so I'm, I know that's not like that everywhere. No, that's a great thing to have, especially with the, the hectic schedule at this time of year when hours are unlimited so they can be doing whatever with the coaches as well. Absolutely. So then how do you account for that with your guys, with the, the extra work and the new summer rules and those things? You know, with How does that extra work then impact what Mike's doing with his guys three floors down? Hey. Every every year is different, you know. That last year, um, on top of the additional two hours, so the coaches got four. We had our international trip, so we had an additional ten practices within that that eight week period, and he spread them out. So we we're I mean, we we're on the court four or five days a week, um, leading up to our international trip this summer. Uh, so I was basically almost in in season mode, at the same time trying to develop these got new guys that came in. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I'm glad it wasn't my first year because I would have really struggled, but again, it was, it was the experience and knowledge of what to subtract, what to add and see the big picture and not just have the blinders on as a strength coach. It's like, Oh, we got to press today. We got to do this today. We got to hit 80% of this today. You can throw all that the, out the window when we were scheduled for a 45 minute shooting workout and we went two and a half hours, full go, full court press practice. And that, that could change in, you know, a uh, 10-minute session based on uh, how the players are doing in practice. So you got to have, you know, things in your back pocket. You got to plan B, C. You got to come in the weight room and subtract stuff or add stuff based on the intensities on the court. Um, again, I'm blessed here. I, don't, I only have men's basketball. I don't have other teams. So I can be at practice. I can see what they're doing. I can kind of mon- monitor them. Um, we don't do any type of GPS or uh, – load tracking in that standpoint but uh i'm there every day to kind of see that so i'm lucky for that point yeah and then so let's let's keep running that way so you're talking about pulling things out and putting things in so what changes did you make this summer based on that trip because i think that that is a really unique challenge that a lot of basketball performance coaches deal with because you've now taken that eight week period mm-hmm. and almost chopped it in half and then quadrupled how much basketball they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> um, right or wrong, what I did is, I mean, I basically changed everything I was doing. Um, went more of an in-season mode from a volume standpoint, but I kept the intensities really high. And what I mean by intensity is not percentage-wise, um, from a standpoint of overloading, fatiguing them, as long as I knew. And then my big thing is I'm not trying to overload your legs. Um, day before practice, I want to amount about 24 hours recovery just from a likelihood of injury standpoint. So really just kind of picking and choosing where I could fit in um, progressive, high-intensity strength training protocols and not affect – the performance on the court and not set them up for a likelihood of, of a soft tissue injury or something worse. Um, so you, you had to be, I had to be way more of an artist than a scientist when it came to strength conditioning this summer of every week was different. Some days we did individuals, some days we did full practice. Sometimes we'd practice morning, sometimes we'd practice afternoon. Sometimes that would change Sunday at 8 PM. So I would throw everything I had out for the week and, and restart. Um, so that's where you just kind of have to, blend and pick and choose of what you're doing. Um, maybe on a day that we're going really hard, we're going to add more mobility and take out um, a resistance type thing. Um, from a volume standpoint of the workout, the workout the workout plan stays the same, but the amount of reps, sets, intensity, and overload we put on a person's body is going to change based on what we're doing that week on the court. Um, yep. No, that's sensational. And then let's let's keep going with that. Um, 
Because I, I think that's interesting because now, at this time of year, we don't have a chance to give them 48 hours or 24 hours before a practice. So how does your training now differ between that period and, and what you're doing now with the guys? Okay. And with, probably within the last three years, I started to add a lot more. Um, I didn't do any of this. I didn't, my first four years, I didn't do any of it. I just stuck with basic strength conditioning. So my first four years, if it was to be 24 hours or 48 hours for the game, we didn't really touch a weight. Um, maybe do a stretch, mobility. Um, Any time before, if it was past 48 hours or more than 40 hours, we'll do some type of strength training. Well, now I want to hit them more. So we'll start, if it's a day before the game or two days out, we'll do more of a, a dynamic effort day. Um, really fell in love. I, I got two gym awares. Uh, I just ended up getting some push um, push bands. I actually go on the bar. That's what kind of sold when they started to go on the bar and I could run multiple athletes through through a, a rack. That's what sold me on push. <clears throat> I started using that. But if it's closer to a game, we'll do more dynamic effort stuff from Vertimax jumps, just kind of high, you know, neurological stuff, get them revved up, plus, you know, stimulates the muscle. And then if eight, and then there's another lift if it's, uh, we have more time, we'll actually overload them and do some type of, um, you know, progressive resistance, traditional stuff, if that makes sense. So it depends on, the, depends on what we're playing. Um, if we have multiple games, we might be doing multiple dynamic effort uh, type lifts that week. If we have longer breaks, like we did over winter break here, we're doing resistance stuff. I like to hit every <clears throat> at least every seven days to get some type of resistance training in. Um, just to try to fight that catabolic impact that basketball's having on their lean muscle mass. Keep going with that. So how, how do you keep working more with that? Because I think that that's the one thing that everybody, at some point or another when you work with basketball, is just like they've got at least one guy on that team that like is just a sieve when it comes to weight staying up. Like, like they're just like they're losing weight. Like oh crazy. my gosh! Yeah, like yeah. preposterously. Yeah, and I, I mean, we've been I've been lucky here. The last couple of years, I've been maintaining guys' weight. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm running around handing out shakes. We do pre-practice carbohydrate drink. We do post-practice shakes, and I'm lucky. These guys are pretty. These guys will do it. Um, first couple of years, I got a lot. Of, a lot it was like pulling teeth, but all my guys are. Um, I got a lot more buy-in. I don't know if it's just the better guys or it's my seventh year here, whatever it is. We have a good group of guys, so I'm do, I'll be able to do a lot of stuff with them. Um, so from that standpoint, nutritionally, we, we try we try to get as many calories as you can use in those guys, obviously. And then from a resistance training standpoint, it's not just the guys, not just the bigs. Um, we're going to do that with everyone from, from guards to, you know, from the bigs to the guys that need to – even the guys that need to lose weight, we're going to do the progressive strength training aspect to fight the catabolic uh, effect so we can uh, decrease the likelihood of an injury. That's my main concern. Um, and if we can keep that lean muscle mass on them, their ability to um, dissipate force from an impact or even from a landing is going to be much better. Love it. Love it. So then, Mike, let me get you out of here on this. With okay. all of this that you've built and, and all of the things that you've got going on up there with, with those guys, where do you see it going next? Where does Mike see the future of what he's doing with UC basketball? Uh, well, like you said, you know, you, you, you look at, you know, you say there's like a spectrum of a strength coach. You got the, everyone has a niche. You have the sports scientist guy. You have the, you know, the, the, the you know, Traditional strength codes. We're gonna we're gonna move iron. I I want to be all for basketball. I want to be all encompassing. I don't want to be known as a sports science guy. I don't want to be known as you know just putting weight on, on guys. I want to be a performance enhancing coach, decrease the likelihood of injury coach. Um, but for me, my first couple of years, I th- I think I did a really good job in the strength training realm um, because I was comfortable with that. You know, putting weight on guys getting really good results, um, bringing in guys that are underweight as recruits and getting them to a good playing weight where they can play physically, and that's kind of the culture we have here. Um, but 
like I said, like I've been talking about what, what, what's kind of feeding my creative juices right now is the sports science stuff from the, from the body scan to using more dynamic effort with the push technology from the gym awares to, um, when we got dyna division now in the weight room, we're going to do some vision training, um, type stuff. Um, we got, we got, we just ordered, we got seven halo silent science, uh, science, um, deals they're supposed to you know work on neuroplasticity uh, to help training we we've had two units for a couple months now and our two guys that have been using it have been performing very well we're kind of sold on it and you know so let's try that if it doesn't work but worth the shot um so yeah just kind of going more more information don't leave any stone unturned more evaluation but at the same time purposeful stuff that's not just busy work um and it's not fake if that makes sense and i'm, I'm trying to figure that out now like what what is this you know sparse science is that is that a valid thing for me or not i don't know i'm going to use it a little bit i like it because it's efficient guys like it um but trying to find new technologies new things to help our program basically is where i'm going sensational brother i love it where can people find out more about mike uh, well, I have a Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I post more on Instagram, but I do stuff on Twitter too. Uh, it's MR. So my initials, Mike Rayfeld, you know, it looks like Mr. <laughs> <laughs> MR strength. UC is, uh, both, both handles for Instagram and Twitter. Um, try to try to post, I try to share a lot. Um, just cause you know, I was a young strength coach at one time. I want to be able to share things that I'm doing. Um, I love looking at other guys that share and just see other, you know, other people's facilities, see what they got in their facilities. Um, you know, how it is as a collegiate strength coach, it's hard to get out and see facilities and go on to go to clinics. So I think social media can be from all the bad things social media is, it can be a great platform uh, and some of an educational tool for us if we use it the right way. Thousand percent brother. Mike, can't thank you enough for all you're doing, buddy. Can't thank you enough for spending the time with us today, my man. This is sensational. Hey Jay, man. Been uh, sorry it took a bit to get get connected, but you know, you know how it is, and I uh, appreciate you having me. Humbled to be on here, and uh, thanks for thanks for letting me share uh, my views. Appreciate it, brother. Best of luck the rest of the way this year, my man. We'll be in touch real soon. You too, Jay. Take care. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. And a huge thanks to Cincinnati basketball's Mike Rayfelt for spending the time with us today, guys. I mean. First of all, Mike, Mike is doing an absolutely sensational job, and the proof is in the pudding with what you see them putting out on the court. But even more so, I mean, a guy who's just so open on it and candid in sharing. You know, we got a chance to rap a little bit last year down in the Cayman Islands, and Mike really is one of the best dudes when it comes to coaches and people in college basketball. So I can't thank Mike enough for, for spending the time with us today and being so open and honest with his sharing, and along with putting out some awesome content to allow coaches to have a – a 15,000-foot view as to what he's doing down there at, uh, in Cincinnati. So, Mike, keep up the awesome work, brother. I'm truly appreciative of everything that you're doing and how you're sharing to help us get better. And as always, guys, if you did enjoy the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. As always, we're just trying to get the best information out there to all the great coaches that we can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.